So we will continue our discussion on uh, Townsend's current growth equation. And uh, to refresh, I will draw the curve that we drew last time. We saw that from 0 to point V1, the current was rising linearly, then it attains saturation and stays till uh, stays at a particular level till level point voltage V2, and then it shows a steep vertical rise, right? So this point is 0, this is V1, this point is V2. So the point uh, somebody pointed out in the last class that we hadn't uh, notified by point V3. So this is point V3 somewhere on this uh, vertical slope. This is voltage V and this is current I. And this is current I naught. Okay. We also derived uh, some expressions we said that the number of electrons is number of electrons in the gap is given by this expression when n naught is the number of electrons uh, released from the cathode or in terms of current we had said that i is equal to i naught times e to the power alpha d Then we talked about secondary electrons. We talked about secondary electrons and how are they responsible for a exponential, rather how they are ex uh, responsible for a large uh, current in the gap. So we mentioned that you have positive ions which are released from the anode and when they strike the cathode when they strike the cathode the <coughs> so we talked about uh, how these positive ions these are liberated uh, or generated from the anode and how they strike the cathode and this uh, this collision releases some more electrons which are known as secondary electrons right so today we are going to quantify uh, the effect of these secondary electrons and we uh, will see how the secondary electrons play a ro role in the current growth in the gap fine start now so we know that n naught is the number of primary electrons we define n plus as the number of secondary electrons these electrons are due to the positive ion bombardment okay this number we had said that this n plus equals to 
gamma times the number of positive ions incident on the cathode okay and we had said that n is the number of electrons reaching the anode n and this number is equal to n naught right plus n plus times e to the alpha d right this is the townsend's first equation so instead of n naught only you have n naught plus n plus n subscript plus then we say that total number of electrons total number of electrons produced within the gap sorry uh, number of electrons starting from the cathode what is this number yes this number is number of primary electrons and not plus number of secondary electrons right and this is the number of electrons reaching the anode so what is the total number of electrons which are produced in the gap number of electrons produced in the gap is equal to this is number n minus n naught plus n plus which is also equal to number of positive ions created in the gap because the, um, the number of positive ions will always be equal to number of negative ions in the gap. So, since this number, since this holds, what do we have? The number of this number n plus is given by this number n plus which is the number of secondary electrons incident on the cathode this is given by gamma times n minus n naught plus n plus this is the number of secondary electrons number of secondary electrons n plus is gamma times the number of 
this number which is the number of positive ions created in the gap So if you multiply both sides by this expression alpha d, what do we get? We get gamma times n alpha times minus n naught plus n plus e to the alpha d. Okay. So if you simplify this, it uh, comes out to be n minus n naught Yes, can you please try simplifying this? What do you have from the previous equation? We have this equation on right as well. No? We have this equation n plus is equal to equals to n minus n naught e to the alpha d. Can you see your previous equations and see if you have this? We had this expression n is equal to n n naught plus n plus times e to the power alpha d. So if you simplify this, you get this expression. So what do you get now? In place of this this term you can write this. So this gives us n minus n naught e to the power alpha d equals to gamma times n e to the power alpha d minus what is this term? What is this term? This term is also n. Right? Then if you further simplify this, what are you left with? You are left with n times 1 minus gamma times e to the power alpha d minus 1. And on the right hand side you are left with this term. Correct? So you simply take this and this to the left hand side. So you are left with this term n times 1 minus gamma times e to the alpha d minus 1 and on the right hand side you have n naught e to the power alpha d So in terms of if you uh, want to keep it like this, 
you are left with this expression 1 minus gamma times e to the power alpha d minus 1 okay where originally in the first instance you only had this expression now you have another factor in the denominator which is this and in terms of current in terms of current you can write i is equal to i naught e to the power alpha d over 1 minus gamma times e to the power alpha d minus 1 This is the Townsend's current growth equation by taking into account the secondary processes. This is the Townsend second growth equation. At, uh, if you see the curve, the characteristic curve that we drew, it is a vertical curve beyond V3. So there will come a point where uh, current becomes very high and the slope is close to infinity. So you call this point as V4. We did not label it on the curve, but this point where the slope is, you know, current is like this or somewhere close to like this mm, the slope is infinity at this point what happens to the current i i naught e to the alpha d over 1 minus gamma times e to the power alpha d minus 1 when will this current be equal to infinity when this term in the denominator is 0 minus gamma times e to the power alpha d minus 1 this is 0 when this is 0 i becomes close to infinity and this is the condition for breakdown of the gap
and the gap is in a fully conducting state. नहीं अभी कुछ नहीं कह रहा हूँ मैं आपने ये नोट किया ओके ओके जी सर सो गामा ई टू दी पावर अल्फा डी माइनस वन is one at this uh, state of uh, breakdown and this is known as the townsend's breakdown criteria criterion rather this expression is known as the townsend's breakdown criterion and this term e to the power alpha d minus 1 is the total number of electrons produced within the gap by the passage of one electron okay which is also equal to number of positive ions created now we define a criteria for self sustained discharge by self sustained we mean that a discharge without the presence of the uv source because if you remember these primary electrons are generated from the cathode when the cathode is bombarded with a uv uv light if you uh, remember from the figure in the last class so when will the discharge be self sustained when this number 
gamma e to the power alpha d minus 1 will be less than 1. In this case, this will not be a self-sustained discharge. And when this number gamma e to the alpha d minus 1, this is larger than 1, this will lead to a more rapid breakdown in the gap. And we define the self-sustained discharge to be a situation where the number of positive ions, positive ion pairs rather, positive ion pairs positive ions or ion pairs reduced in the gap by the passage of one electron avalanche is sufficiently large this number is sufficiently large and it's enough to re release one secondary electron from the cathode and this process is repeated repetition repetition how do you spell repetition repetition of the avalanche process so what happens you have uh, one secondary electron being generated by this electron avalanche and this process gets repeated so it's a sort of a chain reaction one leads to generation of let's say two and these two lead to further generation of more so this process is repeated in such a case what will happen every electron avalanche will have a successor and this discharge let me write this down for you every electron avalanche will have a successor and the discharge will be self-sustained without the use of a um, and can continue without without a source producing I naught that is the UV radiation Okay, is this clear? Okay. Is this clear?
so I'll try to repeat what we have been discussing in the last two classes we uh, discussed the Townsend's experiment then we derived the uh, discussed the Townsend's first ionization coefficient then we derived today the second ionization not derived but we discussed uh, the second coefficient and we derived the Townsend's current growth equation by taking into account account the secondary processes and what was that equation it was times 1 minus gamma times alpha d correct <coughs> okay So with this we conclude this topic on Townsend's current growth equation and in the next class we are going to talk about a another topic which is the Bastion's law and to give you a brief, brief uh, about uh, what, the, uh, what this law basically is, is uh, this gives a relationship between the Let me give you the statement of the Bastion's law. Or maybe I should skip it and talk about it in the next class. Yeah, I think I should. So Bastion's law we'll discuss in the next class where we relate voltage, pressure, okay, and density of gas. Because remember, we are talking about breakdown in gases breakdown in gases so uh, the amount of voltage that you apply to break down a gap also will depend on the pressure of the gas and the density of the electrons right so uh, this is discussed in the uh, this will be discussed in the next class when we talk about Bastion's law okay thank you for your patience thank you for attending and See you in the next class.